Good morning all. Okay, this is my fourth attempt to do this. If I do get heckled by my two-year-old daughter or my son, I'm very, very sorry. So hello during this very weird and wonderful time. So this is the last lecture for Aoli that we'll be doing. If you need any help, support, if anything's not clear of the blogs, please get in touch with your seminar tutor. We're more than happy to answer any emails or obviously to arrange an online meeting if you wanted via Skype or Teams. Um, so in this session, <clears throat> unfortunately, we were going to have Owen Marshall, who is a deputy head of a pupil referral unit in Monmouth. He's going to come and talk to you about how they use numeracy in the outdoors. And obviously in the seminars, it's going to be very uh, hands-on and practical. Please, by all means, have a go. Fill some of the boredom and irritation with having a go at some of these activities. Share what you do. I've set up a flip grid, which I'll share with you at the end, where you can share what you've done. Obviously, you don't have to do this. It might be just a really good opportunity for you just to share your cat with us. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. So I'll quickly run through this and obviously if you can engage with this, obviously for your blogs you need to have a literacy post, a digital competency post and a numeracy post. So we're looking at numeracy and the outdoors today. So obviously the, the most obvious question is why take children outdoors to develop numeracy skills? There's obviously a number of reasons why you do that but it's to help to develop their curiosity, creativity their fluency with maths, when they're outside to change of environment, they're not aware that they're doing maths at the time. It's almost like math through stealth, which I've talked about in lectures before. But when they're outside, they start to talk to their peers, talk to teachers about maths, maths applications, math com uh, maths concepts, a lot more freely. And that oracy helps them to, especially in the foundation phase, to digest and to develop that num numerical skill. <clears throat> We're going to watch this quick video and this gives you some ideas of how maths can be used in the outdoors. Learning numbers can be made easier with practical examples. That's why learning outdoors lends itself so well to developing and encouraging numeracy. In her workshop, Juliet Robertson covered several aspects of numeracy, including symmetry, measurement and weight, problem solving strategies, and the concept of time. Maths actually isn't about pencil and paper activities. Maths is about using numbers as a tool to understand the world around us. Outdoor master chef in a mud kitchen. Your group has to invent a recipe using natural ingredients. The first one, which I absolutely love, is the Outdoor Master Chef, where what happens is it's essentially about measuring and estimating quantities, and the pupils are tasked to develop a recipe using natural materials and then to give a presentation, and they are peer assessed by the other people um, so that they end up marking them on the references to quantities and weights and, and things like that, and also they're marked on their dramatic skills as well and their ability to entertain an audience oh absolutely amazing I have to say and I think it's the freshness that's just been some of the things have just been picked and you can really taste the fresh really solid earthy taste learning numeracy outdoors is great because the resources are there all you need is your imagination your creativity the enthusiasm so here's my really rubbish example I always give rubbish examples why? Because then you know the children are going to do better. If One of the things we did in the workshop was making clay faces, which sounds like a fairly standard art activity, but each participant was challenged to make an, a symmetrical and asymmetrical designs, and then they had to wander around and decide which is more scary, asymmetrical faces or symmetrical faces. <coughs> if you work these as challenges and make them open-ended, it does certainly increase the level of higher order thinking and that application of mathematical skills. 
on a black bin liner, take a pile of sand and challenge the children to make a sand sculpture, three of them in fact, one with the biggest volume and one with the biggest area and the other with the biggest perimeter and the children have to decide how they're going to sort out the quantities and how they're going to create the sculptures. I work with the children uh, to get them to do measurements outside as part of the whole process of looking at their spaces and, and helping them to, to think in terms of a, being a designer a little bit um, and working out how spaces work. And so obviously numeracy, maths, measuring all comes into it. That this group was asked to build a water clock that would time within one or two seconds a minute of water going through. So as you can see, they've used different bits and pieces here. And what I did was I gave them a variety of different loose parts. Taking maths outside has many advantages. The first one is that you can do a bigger, better and different experience and all the activities done today could not have been undertaken indoors but it's simply because of the amount of mess and the size of the equipment that was involved. So there's just some ideas there that you could obviously use when you're trying to develop numeracy. Obviously, there's loads of um, opportunities and positives for why we should go in the outdoors. Owen was going to definitely elaborate on these when he came in. Obviously, for his pupils, a lot of these pupils have, for whatever reason, mainstream education has not worked for them. Um, traditional formats of sitting down and doing maths from textbooks, as he talks about, just doesn't work. So they use in their school the outdoors to develop mathematical thinking and it just offers that different stimulus and as I mentioned you know learning through stealth it provides an opportunity for them to come up with different mathematical solutions without even noticing it might even offer a different perspective on the maths being explored and it's just a bit more engaging you know when uh, he's going to share some um, settings of the of there you can have a look it's ta the Talaka school I'll put some links to the school but it's obviously it's surrounded by nature it's got a lot of adventure playgrounds uh, a lot of um, <clears throat> just just surrounded by nature in the country and they, they do go outside all the time for these reasons he will <clears throat> he was going to share with you obviously there are some challenges with going outside and it's definitely not this silver bullet that's going to make maths relevant and children are going to be ultimately engaged because that just doesn't happen it does take time and you do need to build up those mathematical foundations before you can do this but sometimes especially for his students it's maybe too overstimulating um you know when they've worked with rivers he was going to provide the example of when they were working with rivers and a local stream Obviously, it was too much stimulation and they all ended up in the stream. So, you know, it can be a big distraction. Um, also, you know, if, if the foundations aren't there, as he was going to talk to you about, you know, they, they can't develop or build on anything because they need to have those mathematical foundations. There's some quotes here that obviously you can reflect on and use in your <coughs> blog. I think an important one here is that is uh, a lot of the time learning is too easily appropriated by adults. You know, a lot of the time we're designing these activities without much thought to what the children might like for what we, we might think is really interesting and exciting. We need to consider their student voice as well and think about what will actually they be engaged with. <clears throat> so as going in the outdoors and giving them autonomy to choose and to select what activities they want to use and what resources they want to use, it's much better. Some ideas here, uh, most of them revolve around chalk, which you can pick up for you know a pound in your local own baggings. So just some ideas in the top left there um, was a litter pick um, in the in the playground. So obviously you had the the positive of the, the litter pick, but also then some data collection and represented that in a graph and they found out what items that they found. There's games um, that you can um, obviously develop and develop numeracy skills. Drawing each other is a brilliant one and using measure then to measure how big you are by using chalk and drawing around you. Equations on the yard is a brilliant one <clears throat> and they can show their workings. Data collection just by using sticks, 
and obviously you've got that as we talked about last week about graphs it can be quite a hard concept um, in terms of data handling but by getting them outdoors and actually handling and manipulating different quantities it can make it a lot easier and just here's just this outdoor math share there's a brilliant example here of just providing the resources and the children then have the autonomy to go and select what they want to use and with some ideas then on the door okay so we were going to be going outside as i mentioned you may want to go outside yourself have a go at doing this in your garden if you want you might get some strange looks from your neighbors but you can bribe them with toilet roll it's absolutely fine so what we were going to look at we're going to look at the master chef the mud faces and the tallest tower so just to give you a bit more context for these have a look at the literacy and numeracy framework and think about what skills need to be developed as a starting point i've also put on a folder of ideas and uh, resources that you can use and i've put them into a, um, a handout which you can take away and you could use on placements or your own experience you could even share these with the children. So there's the stick graphs, angle hunt, there's all these different activities that you could do and have a go at. Obviously these all relate to the four purposes. So think about if you were gonna have a go at any of these activities, how could you relate these to the four purposes and what would it develop? Okay, so the first one that was mentioned in the video is the outdoor master chef. So, Obviously, all you need for this, you don't even need these resources, but it would be great if and most schools now have them. But just some cooking uh, utensils, maybe a pan, uh, a spatula, that sort of thing, just to encourage and start their creativity. But a lot of the time, you know, you might just want to use a stick or to mime things and encourage their creativity. So think about what is going to go into your ingredients just using natural resources mud um, and then again bringing in some ideas of literacy and creativity and what think about measure what might be in there so three milliliters of frog's eyelids etc or four grams of a fairy's shed skin again you can come up with these on your own again if you could share these with me at the end via flipgrid that'd be brilliant we were then going to look at mud masks. We were going to use clay. Clay use, uh, is a lot easier to manipulate. Um, you have to find the right sort of mud, but again, mud works just as well. Um, so you find a tree, you talk to them about symmetry and asymmetrical. So I, I was going to encourage you to make a symmetrical clay um, face on a tree and then to make an asymmetrical one. Then we're gonna discuss which was more scarier and why. So have a go at making both of those and think about which is more scarier and why. The tower challenge obviously is to develop numeracy and engineering and steam and all those ideas, but it also resilience, because obviously as you can imagine children working with sticks doesn't always happen the first time so they're going to need collaboration they're going to need resilience to have a go at doing this so you can see from the picture here's an idea have a go have a go in your garden so you think as i mentioned there is the folder of outdoor resources that i've used with schools that uh, myself dylan has used with schools so it's jordan um, so have a look in those and again, dip into those, have a go with any of your children, friends, relatives that you're in isolation with, have a go. The final part of this session was going to be um, the survival numeracy. Whenever I've done this with children, they've absolutely loved it um, and they've really come up with some brilliant ideas. So the idea is that, and you can set this in any way, that when they go outside, they are having to survive a series of tasks i've set it that they're in a plane crash and there's some numeracy to start there's a short video you can watch and then we'll get into it we interrupt this seminar with breaking news over to you in the news studio i have a story here with the breaking news of a potential plane crash it was said that cardiff met students who were amongst the passengers there were 272 on board when the plane crashed into woods. 
25 of them being adults, the rest were children. Experts are trying to now work out how many children have survived. The plane was travelling at a thousand kilometres an hour. It crashed after 35 minutes. Experts now are trying to work out how far the plane had travelled to pinpoint where the survivors are. It's estimated by experts that survivors are rifling through the train, the plane wreckage to try and work out items they can survive. We'll be back with more news on this later on. Okay, so there's a video that you can make. Obviously, we've shown you iMovie, we've shown you clips. You could set up your own video for that. There's some numeracy problems to start with. But again, the children are usually really, really excited that they've got this survival task. So they go, all you need for this is to play the video in the classroom and then to go outside. I would then either print off the resources. Um, so there's some resources here and here. And also, you're going to need to give them some whiteboards to show their numerical thinking. So you take them outside, you tell them you've landed in a forest, an island. You've got to leave the island as the plane is leaking large volumes of plane fuel and the area is highly flammable. They will need to quickly select four items from all the items that I'll give you now. They have to discuss why they would take these four items. So they need to show reasoning for selecting these items. There's another island 500 meters away that you can swim to. So they also need to think about how they can keep them waterproof whilst they swim across. They also then, you can give them these survival cards. They need to select a number from one to 10. Once they've given you the number, you give them a survival card. You then would head into, we were going to go to the log circle too. So these are the survival cards where they've given you one. For example, if they've chosen one, the island is inhabited by nomadic tribes of hunter gatherers. Some of the tribes are extremely dangerous cannibals, but some tribes are quite friendly. And then you reveal obviously the items. They can select four of these. So they needed to show some reasoning and think about their survival scenario. So obviously there are some cannibals on the island. So think about what they need to do to survive. Think also how you could develop this activity. Again, share your ideas with me on Flipgrid.